Hey guys, here today to talk to you about our selfie. This is through a uh, website, whipsmart.com. And if you go there, and uh, there is something called the selfie, and there's a 20 question self exam. So it's five questions from each of the ma major categories on the ASVAB. And take it, submit it. You gotta give us an email. It's free, and uh, we'll give you back information on things that look great, things that need a little bit of improvement, so you have a good idea of what you need to be working on as you're getting ready for your ASVAB. All right, so in addition, we have 10 questions that we picked out that we think are likely type of questions that you would see on the exam. So let's uh, go through these. A good way to think about doing this is I'll write the question here on the whiteboard and pause it, go ahead and try and solve it yourself, and then see how we solve it, make sure you got it right. All right, decimal division is first. So let's look at this one. 15.6 divided by 0 0.0039. All right, so you get something like this. this is a common as value question. All right, the way we do this, we need to get rid of the decimal point. So our rules are if we go four decimal places, four decimal places here to get rid of this decimal, we gotta do the same thing over on this side. So we go one, two, running out of room here, three, four. All right, so what would that look like? Every time we are adding decimal points here, decimal places here, we're adding zeros. So we end up with 156,000 because four decimal places. And then this is gone, and we have 156,000 divided by 39. And as we do that, that equals 4,000 once you do the math. All right, that's the first one, decimal division. If you know that rule, and we can do a little bit of math, pretty simple. All right, second one. Exponents, exponents and radicals, also likely to see. So what if we get something like this? N to the fifth times N to the third divided by N to the third. Okay, so the uh, same thing now, all we have to really know is what are the rules for doing a problem like this, right? So we're multiplying exponents with the same base, right? So it's not like two is, all we will do is add these exponents. Five plus three is eight. That'll give us n to the eighth, right? Divided by, nothing's happened yet, to n to the third, divided by n to the third, okay? We're not there yet, right? Now we need to know that when we're dividing exponents with the same base, we subtract the exponents. Eight minus three is five, n to the fifth would be our answer for that one. All right, there's two down, two real common as bad questions. Next one, factor. All right, factors. So give me a second to write this one out. We have 4xy plus 36x squared y minus 64xy squared. Running out of room. xy squared. Okay, so first thing we got to think about is what can we take out of all three of these, right? So the first thing we look at is, okay, we got four here. Is Can four go evenly into 36? The answer is yes, four times nine is 36. So we go over here, can four go into negative 64 or just think 64 first, right? And the answer to that is also yes, four times 16 is 64. So we know we can take out a four, all right? And then we look at the variables. What about X? Is there X in all these? X, X, and x. So that would be yes, so we can do that. Can we take an x squared, right? Here we have x squared, here we just have an x, here we just have an x, so the answer to that is no, it's just an x that we can take out, and then what about y, right? That's the other variable, y, 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 here we have a y squared, just y's here, four x, y, that's what we can take out. All right, and then we gotta multiply, right? We've already done all the hard work. So we had start off with four x, y, we already have four x, y here, so we can't add anything to it, so we just have a one, right? That'll give us, 4xy times 1 will give us that 4xy. All right, we've got our plus, and we just said that 4 times 9 is 36, so we know we're going to have a 9 first, right? And we have xy. Here we have x squared y. So we need to put on an x to get that to be x squared. 4xy times 9x equals 36x squared y. And then one more, minus, right? We already said 4 times 16, 64. Got that. And we have xy squared here, we just have xy, so we've got to throw on a y. 
right? And that 4xy times negative 16y equals negative 64xy squared. And finish her off. That's our answer. All right. There's factors. Okay, order of operations. Also, almost for sure you're gonna see at least one of these, probably a couple of them on the ASVAB. So again, let me write this out. We have four to the third minus three times two plus four squared plus three plus three also squared. Okay, so it's a bunch of stuff. The main thing we have to remember is PEMDAS, right? If we don't know PEMDAS, we have no chance to solve this problem, right? PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. You have to memorize that, right? That's the order we're going to solve this. So first thing we said was parentheses, right? Okay, so we don't do anything with the exponent yet. Four to the third minus three, two plus four is six. So we're gonna do this because that's parentheses, squared, not yet, plus another parentheses, six, squared. Okay, and we move down to the next line. Okay, second thing, in PEMDAS, exponents, right? So then we're gonna go ahead, exponents, four to the third is 64. Four times four is 16, times four is 64. Minus three times six squared, six times six, 36. Good, plus, Again, six times six, 36. All right, that takes care of exponents. Now it's starting to look a little better. Uh, next is multiply, right? M, still we leave the 64 over here, minus three times 36, 108, plus 36. Okay, easy to make a mistake right here. Go ahead and think you're just gonna do this right in order, that you would subtract, right? But a subtract is actually last, right? We didn't have any divide. Add comes before subtract. Okay, so 108 plus 36, one, Four, four, 64 minus 144. Now we're finally ready to subtract. 64 minus 144, negative 80. All right, that's order of operations. You gotta remember, PEMDAS, and then take your time, right? You got those two things, you're in a good place. Money questions. Okay, money question is also common. Um, so we're gonna say we bought something for 100, something was $120, that's what it costs. And the price just went up 30%. So that's usually like a word problem, so it'll say something like, uh, plane ticket cost $120 last week, um, you waited, now it's 30% more, how much does it cost now? Okay, so. Fairly straightforward if you know how to do these. 120 times 0 0.30 is where we start, right? We're gonna multiply those and that's gonna say how much it increased by, right? 120 times 0.3 is 36, okay? And that likely will be one of the answer choices when you do this, right? One of the answer choices will be how much it increased by, but they said how much is the cost now? So we have to add these two together, 120 plus 36, 156 would be the price now 30% higher than 120. All right, we're halfway done. Five left. Whipsmart.com is getting erased. All right, what else we got? Ratios, proportions, and rates. Another common question. Okay, again, like this would almost surely be a word problem. And the question is something like, 750 members at some club, golf club, tennis club, something like that. 750 members in the club. Four times as many are senior citizens as not. Okay, four times as many of the members are senior citizens as not. 750 total members, how many are senior citizens? Okay, we just gotta know how to set up the equation. Right, and that's pretty simple, right? Four times as many are senior, 4X, plus the people who are non-senior citizens, which would just be X, equals 750. And then we solve 5X equals 750, divide by five, divide by five, 
x 150. Okay, now very commonly you'll be asked how many, so the question was how many are senior citizens? If they had asked how many are non-senior citizens, that would be 150, right? Because x was non-seniors, 4x was seniors. So in order to find how many senior citizens, we have to find out a room here. Multiply that 150 by 4, 600 senior citizens, and we said 150 non-senior citizens. If we add those two together, we get our total 750. We know we got the right answer. All right. Number seven, probability. Okay, so you get a question, something like this. It'll say 10 red balls. Five green balls. Okay, so you got ten red, five green. And then the question in this case says, what is the probability of drawing a red first and a green second? And once you draw that red, you throw it out so it can't be put back in there. What is the probability of um, having that order, right? And okay, so we start off ten red balls, five greens, so we have fifteen total. What's like gonna be getting red? 10 out of 15, right? Which can be reduced to 2 out of 3. All right, so we got that, right? 2 out of 3. And then we said, what is the odds of get of drawing that green ball second, right? And what would happen now, again, I've run out of room, is 5 greens, and there's 14 left, right? 5 out of 14. Now, likelihood of getting those consecutively in order is we have to multiply those two numbers together get our answer, right? So we had two out of three originally for red, then we have five out of 14 for green, and we multiply these together, 10, 42. 10 out of 42 is our answer. And make sure that you don't go five out of 15, it's very tempting, right? To say five out of 15, so it'd be two thirds times one third, that would not give us the right answer. All right. Couple of geometry questions here. Circles. Um, circumference equals 20. Sorry, I can't write. Circumference equals 20. What is the area of a circle? Okay. So in this situation, what we really have to know is what is the formula for area? Area of a circle. Area of a circle equals pi r squared. Okay. And radius is half. Of circumference, right? So circumference equals 20, that means radius is 10. Okay, and now we have all the stuff we need to, fall, to solve this equation. All right, area equals pi r squared. Now area equals pi times 10 squared. Area equals pi times 100 or 100 pi. And that's our answer. That's simple. All right, cruising right along. Two left, okay, uh, right triangle, okay? Right triangle, so right triangle will see something like this. I know I see this little guy right here signifying that it's a right triangle, okay? And this question says one leg is four, another one is six, what is this right here? And remembering that, or need to know that this is called the hypotenuse. We have a right triangle, and we got these two numbers here. This is called the hypotenuse, and we find the hypotenuse by Pythagorean theorem, which says a squared plus b squared, c squared. This is a, this is b, I don't know why I put x, I should have put c, c squared, okay? So from here, just gotta plug them in. Four squared plus, 6 squared equals c squared, okay? Now what are these? 16 plus 36 c squared. Let's not forget that number. 16 plus 36 equals c squared. Okay, add these two together. 52 equals c squared. Right, and then we have to 
to get rid of that squared, we're going to have to throw a little square root on there, right? You gotta do it to the other side, we do it to one side, and that's our answer. C equals square root of 52. Okay, so another way they might ask a question like this is they might only get, say it's most nearly which number, like round off to a whole number, right? And so in that case, we would know that this answer is most nearly seven, right? Because the square root of 49 is seven, the square root of 52 is very close to seven. That would be right. Square root of 64 equals eight, much further away. So we would know that the answer is pretty close to seven. Okay, that's right triangles. All right, made it to the end, the last one. And probably one of the hardest ones, slope and y-intercept, right? This requires you probably to do more than any of the other questions we've done. So we will take our time with it, roll right through. Okay, so they give us two points and they want us to find slope and y-intercept. They might ask, usually a question wouldn't ask you for both, they would usually ask for one or the other, but they might ask for both. But we gotta know how to do both, right? So x and y, x and y. So three is x, one is y, five, zero. Okay, and this is really like x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, so if we wanna find slope, it's y2 minus y1, over x2 minus x1, okay? So here, zero minus one, right? Divided by x2 is five, x1 is three, five minus three, okay? Zero minus one, five minus three equals negative one half, okay? So that's slope. Slope equals, put that up here, above whip smart, Slope equals negative one half in case I forget. And come back. Okay. That's honestly probably the easier one. And then we have y-intercept. Okay. So how do we find y-intercept? Okay. So we have, we don't know this formula. Got to know this. Y equals mx plus b. Okay. And so we'll go ahead and put in these two numbers into this formula. To go ahead and solve. So what does that look like? Y equals one, right? So there we have one. Equals slope is m, y intercept is b. All this stuff, we must know this. Okay, slope. So slope is m. We know slope equals negative one half. We just found that out, right? Negative one half, right? Times x. Oh, and x is three. Sorry, I made my own mistake. X is three, all right? So that's right there y was one, x was three. So we have negative one half times three plus b. b is y intercept, we don't know what that is yet, so we just put b, all right? Then we have to multiply this out. Negative one half times three equals negative three halves, right? Negative one times three is three, two times one, two. So now we have one equals negative three halves plus b, okay? And all that's left, now we need to get rid of this negative three halves. So B is by itself, so we can know what the Y intercept is, right? So if we add three halves, right, or 1.5, right? 1.5 and three halves are the same thing. Add 1.5, both sides, we get 2.5 equals B. And that's our Y intercept, right? So Y intercept is 2.5, slope is negative one half. That's our answer. All right, so those are our 10 questions. If you guys have questions about any of the work that we did here, please go ahead and let us know and we'll respond. If there's more types of videos you would like to see, let us know, check out our, uh, our channel. Right? We have dozens of videos that go more specifically over lots of examples of all the type of questions that you will see on the exam. And don't forget, go and take the selfie uh, and we will get back to you with information on how to better prepare for your exam.